I'm at Europe's biggest general aviation expo, Aero Friedrichshafen in Germany. There are 12 exhibition halls here full of the latest aircraft, tech, tools and gadgets. But my mission is to focus on one aspect of aviation today and that's microlights. Now when you think of microlights you might think of flimsy open cockpit type contraptions but many of the microlights of today are nothing of the sort. They're modern, fuel efficient, comfortable and really fast and they outperform many of the legacy Part 21 type aircraft like the PA-28 or the Cessna 172. Let's go and take a look at some of them. I can give you this one. Oh, that's amazing. I love it. How are you? First up is JMB Aircraft and Mate is going to show me around the VL3. As I found out, getting into the cockpit isn't easy when you don't know how, but once on board, I realised that this is an impressive machine. One of the amazing things about the Microlite, the new Microlite class, is the amazing innovation and range of aircraft that are coming on the market compared with, say, the certified world that I usually um, exist within. And this is the VL3, which has actually been around for about three, uh, sorry, 11 years now. And what's stunning about it is the comforts, the, uh, the technology. It's got a parachute. Uh, it burns 20 litres an hour. It's what, 75% cruise or something Correct. like that? And, and does about 160 knots at 4,000 feet. JMB is a Czech company. Correct. This is the 915 IS. IS. Um, which is a kind of mid-range model, is that right? Let's say it like that, yeah. yeah. We're, we're sitting in already very nicely performance-wise aircraft. Yeah. Uh, so only if you want to go higher with a, with, for, for better numbers, you can only go for a 916 IS or of course the, the VL3 with the turbine engine. So if we're looking at performance, we're sitting in a VL3 915 IS, which produces uh, 141, 142 horsepower. Uh, you'll be climbing uh, out of your airport at 2,000 feet and uh, you're looking at the fuel burn as you mentioned around uh, 20 liters you know I, I i fly a 200 horsepower piper i mean i know it's a lot heavier you know yeah 2900 pounds probably get yeah six to eight hundred feet per minute yeah you you will and, you and will up, and 130 knots maximum really in the yep. cruise yeah so 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 we're we're really speaking about the aircraft that is uh, that is much more faster than than uh, than a lot of planes this is why it attracts a lot of uh, people into you said you're from certified aviation mm. and this is why non-certified aviation is so attractive because you can have whatever avionics you want you can have uh, whatever equipment on board and basically you're still legal and you're still flying very fast if you fly in flight level 180. So you're basically doing 200 knots, which is uh, getting you places. It certainly is. And um, what what what's the price range for this? This is, as we say, kind of the mid-range um, or slightly top of the range model. So what would we be paying for this at the basic level? We've got a full kit here, a Garmin correct. full panel. Um, I think you do a sort of slimmed down panel with a G3X? With the G3X on a, on a pilot side. Uh, with trig, the trig, trig radios. Correct, and things, yeah. correct. And what would, that, what would that cost? So we're looking at uh, slightly below 300,000 euros, okay. uh, VAT uh, excluded. And this, this could be in the UK probably from late late in this year sometime. Yep, yep. So we're heavily working with BMAA yep. uh, on this. There's a, there's a lot of documentation. There is a lot of bureaucracy, let's say, yeah. that needs to be done and realistically this the end of this summer we'll see the VL3 on uh, on a G registration one thing that i suspect puts people off from the very much lighter end of aviation like this is the aircraft's susceptibility to turbulence but one company thinks it's found the answer to that. So it's a very big day for us, uh, for Turbulence Solutions. Our vision is to make flights turbulence free. And this is our turbulence cancelling system. And no it's way. the first day that we can show it as a product that you can order. And what we do is we have this probe. So it's like a pitot, but more than that, it measures just one per million of the ambient pressure. Mm. So 0.1 Pascal. And when, when you look here, I just produced some turbulence. We also oh, have wow. something moving there at the back of the wing. Wow. And this is a turbulence flaplet. So we produce some turbulence, but it's counter turbulence. So exactly the motion you feel on the stomach going up and down, going up and down. We do down, up, down, up, and it cancels out to almost zero. So it's so, kind of, yeah, frequency 
brushing. Very yeah. similar yeah. to noise cancelling. Yeah. So you get the noise in, yeah. count the noise, and then it cancels out. And at the moment, our product promise is 70%. We're pretty optimistic to reach even 80% for the, for the first product. What does that actually mean in flight? I mean, you've flown with it. Yes. What so does it feel like? This means that if you have 0.5G going up and down and 0.5G pu uh, pulled out of the seat, it's you really reduced. It's really a nasty feeling. Mm. That's discomforting. I don't fly with this small aircraft because it's really turbulent feeling. Mm. And that's the cool thing about these. And I mean, you're not going to give the game away, but rough, yeah. in basic terms, how does it work? Basic terms, measuring the turbulence ahead of the wing. And now we have the opportunity by measuring the pressure here. We know what will happen at the wing an instant later, and then we do at the exact moment the exact counter turbulence. Aero Friedrichshafen, of course, caters for all aspects of aviation. If you're visiting just for a day, you're unlikely to see everything and you'll need a comfortable pair of shoes for all the walking that's required. But I'm sticking with my focus on microlights and another model that's soon to be flying in the UK skies. God, this is a wonky chair. Uh, you give me the wonky chair. You wait. This one's mine, I'm sorry. <laughs> you Are you chair? saying something about how much I weigh? Is that what this is? Don't fall off, Jim. Yeah. That won't be funny to <laughs> What's your name, sir? Uh, Michal. Michal, good to meet you. Hello. You're from Skyleader. That's it. And this is the Skyleader 400 which is soon to be on the G-Reg. That is correct. Uh, we are going in a process, through a process of certification right now, uh, expecting the aircraft to be uh, certified in UK uh, approximately June to July uh, this year. And then uh, the next project or the next uh, step is going to be certification of the 600. So the 400 then, what are the key statistics, the key performance characteristics? Uh, the key performance characteristics are uh, the aircraft is especially designed for recreational flying for flight schools, uh, cruises at about 200 kilometers per hour. Performance-wise, we use uh, Rotax 912 ULS or 912 IS engine. It has a very good stall characteristics, uh, short takeoff and landing performance, and it's especially designed, it's especially designed for flight schools, easy to maneuver, uh, ideal aircraft for flight training. You mentioned the stall, stall characteristics, and that's one thing about a lot of these microlights is their stall speeds are crazy. It's like, how, how, what's the stall speed on that? Uh, you're looking at about uh, 55 kilometers per hour, somewhere around there, 59. Uh, so the stall speeds are really, very really low. Uh, good stall characteristics uh, where you get a nice buffeting before, so it actually warns you before the actual stall. In this world of microlight flying, light sport aircraft, you're kind of middle of the range in terms of price, are you? Uh, about that, yes. Where uh, would you sit? What's the price for this? Uh, looking for this model right there to weigh uh, to this one that, that is displayed, about 145,000 euro uh, before tax. And what about the UK market? You're, are you excited to be bringing this to the UK? Uh, definitely, uh, especially now that it opened up uh, the 600 kilogram uh, certification now. Uh, where, you, where the UK allows the 600 kilogram ultralights or microlights, as, as you say in the UK. Uh, it really opens the, uh, the door uh, to all the manufacturers, actually, not just us. And I'm uh, really excited to uh, have the 400 model there just in a few weeks. Good to meet you. Thanks for Thank chatting. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Oof. Oof. <laughs> he was so worried. He, felt really, he had to stand in because Ashok, who's meant to come, wasn't available. Ashok is Did you hear that? The end of my interview. Oof. Ash Ashok is going to buy me beers tomorrow. <laughs> so what's the reason for this surge of innovation and explosion of new microlight aircraft on the market? Rob Hughes from the British Microlight Aircraft Association explains. So very quick potted history. 2014-15, EASA thought electric aircraft were going to be the future so they had to increase the payload of small aircraft. We had a 450 kilo limit. We saw the opportunity and finally, long story short, reached 600 kilo. In that period, Czechs and others were building aeroplanes. So innovation is actually from about 2016, 2017. And some of these aircraft have been designed that long ago, but have reached the UK market. We had a rule change in the UK, August 2021, increased our weight limit from 450 to 600 kilo and that opened the floodgates to existing designs, but also completely new designs to be available in the UK. And we, the BMAA, are acting as uh, an approval agent for the CAA 
to see these new types come in. And how many have been getting onto the UK permit system? It's a long process. <laughs> We What's the number? What's we, we actually got the first one through within three months, okay. which was the Eurofox 560. There are five absolutely new types mm. in two and a half years, um, but there are a further nearly 20 changes to existing types. So the Sky Ranger used to be 450 kilo, is now several variations up to 600 kilo. The Icarus C42 again was 450 kilo, now is at 520, 560 and 600 kilo. Will we say, I mean I get a sense that this is probably the future of light aircraft flying. I, I don't know, you know, looking at the economies of it, the, the, you know, the expense, the, the fact that it's more environmentally friendly on many levels. Where, where is it going to go? Is this go? Do you think this is going to be where we we're going to be? You know, at the moment I'm flying a 1977 Piper Arrow, right? There's going to come a time when all those PA28s and TB10s and all others will, you know, be no longer serviceable. So I'm the CEO of the Microlight Association, and of so the you're UK, going to advocate. So for I'm going to say it's the best in the world. Look, let's be honest. They're two seat. Yeah. If you want to fly more than two seat, then you won't. This won't be the future for you. However, how many people actually do fly three or four seat, or if they want to fly three or four seat, then they can go and rent on those few occasions that they do. It's a big jigsaw. I've actually just had a meeting with CAA just now. If we can get together the, the ability of our industry to deliver, so that's importers, manufacturers, us the approvals, CAA, because it's all about manpower and budget. If we can get the airworthiness right, which we have largely, and if we can get the licensing right, which is a crucial last factor, why would you choose to learn to fly two people in a four seat, two people in a Cessna 152, burning leaded Avgas at, I don't know, double, 20, double 25 to 30 yeah. litres per hour. Mm. So the cost of the fuel alone is at least double, mm. but you're also training through a DTO, a, a, a delegated training organisation. What is your future flying going to be? If we can sort out all of our pieces of the jigsaw, specifically the licence uh, aspect, you could learn to fly on a lightweight two-seat microlight and then go wherever you want to after that, but at least you have the core skills in a three-axis aeroplane at half the cost, a third the cost, and a third the environmental impact of the thing you're currently learning in. So there's a great future there. But it's likely to be evolutionary rather than revolutionary. Purchase prices being the main reason for that. Paul Henry Smith is from the Light Aircraft Company, the UK's distributor for the Icarus C42, the best-selling microlight here and he's soon to be distributing the Shark as well. There's a kind of trade-off. Right. So you can buy something like a C42, 560 max takeoff capability and it's a microlight and you're going to spend 130,000 sterling to get it in the air. Uh, you've got reduced maintenance, you can do your own maintenance, uh, you've got reduced running costs, you're probably burning anywhere between 13 and 18 litres an hour of fuel compared with something like a PA28 burning 25 litres an hour of fuel. And the rest? Oh, yeah, it depends what engine you've got in there <laughs> and it depends how fast you want to go. Um, so you've got your initial purchase price is probably going to be more expensive than a reasonable half-life PA28. If you want something new. If you want something new. Yeah. If you go to a shark then you're going to be parting company with uh, around 260,000 euros plus VAT. Uh, once again, you do your own maintenance, but uh, it is a serious touring aircraft. No. Your, your initial, your entrance cost for something new can be more than a good used GA aircraft. But there again, if you want something of equal performance new, then you're going to end up with something like a Cirrus and you're going to be paying between four, four, four or five times as much. One and a quarter, one and a half yeah. million, yeah. yeah. So it's horses for courses. Yeah. I've enjoyed returning to Germany for the 2024 Aero Friedrichshafen and it's been good to shine a light on an area of aviation I didn't really know much about until now. My thanks to those who gave me their time to chat about microlight aircraft flying and thanks to you for watching and sticking with the video to the end. I hope you've enjoyed my roundup from Aero Friedrichshafen here. And if you're watching this and thinking, oh, I wish I'd gone to Aero Friedrichshafen and really want to go to a general aviation show, you might not have to wait a full year before one comes up because, of course, there is the private flyer show at Wickham Air Park 
near London on the 17th and 18th of May. Yours truly is going to be there. I shall be hosting the live lounge stage and I'll have a series of special guests through both days of the show for you to come and meet as well. And being a Flying Reporter follower, you benefit from a great discount off your tickets if you book them and pay for them now. Just go to the Private Flyer website, use my code TFR, and your tickets will cost just £5. That's a great discount, and uh, I hope you take, take uh, them up on that offer. Oh, it'll do, it'll do. Everything seems to have stood still for 40 years. We're still burning lead in Avgas, blah, blah, blah. Tell me about... Hi. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Just come over and say hello because we're sure you're here. Okay, mate. We will. We are filming. Yeah. <laughs> There's always one. Oh, and it was my turn this time. <laughs> There's always one. I'll, I'll wander off, mate. You're too popular, John. TFR, put that in the discount code, code box and you'll get five pounds. No, that's not right either. Uh, let's check. Yeah, yeah, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Stop panicking. Right, good. So. Uh, how do I introduce Relax, this? Relax, chill. I'm fine, I'm just thinking. Oh, focus, I don't think I've quite focused you. Try and stay in this spot here. Yes, did I move too much? I think you moved out. Okay, I've, yeah. I've loosened it up a bit, yeah, so yeah. it'll okay. probably be all right. Yes. You can tell that this is not my world normally. Um, of course. Sure most, most of my viewers will understand. Oh, let me do this again, this is ridiculous. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do the marketing for our company. Don't worry, we can stay here all day. <laughs> okay. Don't tell him that. Don't tell me that, no.